Hi guys, Jay here from Just Technics, doing a video this time for you coming from my flat instead of at the workshop. I thought this is a perfect opportunity as my other half is out at a Christmas do with a load of her mates to do the comparison video review between the Technics SL1210 Mark 7 that everybody's talking about and doesn't know a great deal about and the ever so popular Reloop RP7000 Mark 2. So I thought it'd be perfect opportunity to do a little review video and give you the differences between the two turntables. We'll go through a few of the technical specs on them, build quality, or the all important pitch control, and just give you my honest opinion between the two. So let's start off with the technics, shall we? So let's give you a quick brief run through as to what the score is. This I purchased brand spanking new earlier on in the year. I did this purely so that I could do a review on this for you guys. I had so many customers on my page saying to me, Jay, have you tried the ARP? Have you tried the Mark 7 yet? Jay, have you mixed on them on the Mark 7 yet? Have you seen it in person? So this was it. I decided, right, okay, enough is enough. Let's buy one. Let's tear it down and we'll have a look. So if you guys go on my YouTube channel and look at the actual Mark 7 video, you'll see that this deck was delivered to me it was it was taken out of its box live on video and i uploaded the video for that on youtube but this is the, still the same turntable so many people were saying to me have you returned it well this answers your question no i haven't uh it's still sitting here it's been taken home it's gonna be a few modifications done to this deck at a later date including buttons tone arm etc which i was briefly talking about on the last video but for now keep it as it is be happy I've got it. It's an expensive turntable at the end of the day. So uh, this is that. But yeah, nice turntable, guys. This is, I'll be honest, it is a nice deck. The majority of people that tend to do reviews on these decks or um, or give an honest or give an opinion on Facebook, which seems to be the main thing, social media, is mainly people that haven't actually seen or used these decks in person. It's just people that read a review online and go, oh, I'm not doing that. And then they quote the exact words from the review from the person who's written it. And they say that all the time on social media. So I can tell you now, as I'm actually the owner of this turntable, I can give you my honest feedback. Build quality between this and the other Technics turntables is not so great. Okay, it is more plastic, and it's no. You can see it straight away from just how it looks. If I can't quite close, it does look very tasty. It's a nice looking turntable, but. It really doesn't cut the mustard build quality wise. I mean, it's light as a feather. You can lift it up look, with your little finger and you hardly break a sweat. I could literally hold it there for ages. It does not hurt. It does not weigh anywhere near as much as an original Technics. It's a mixture of plastic and fiberglass or style ABS on the rubber base, which again, is not the best for absorbing all of the, uh, the vibrations. So playing in a nightclub, it's going to be interesting to see how this thing fares out. But it's more catered, I'd say, for people playing at home, if I want my honest opinion. Buttons, in terms of build quality between this and the original buttons from the Mark IIs, to give you an idea, I think these feel cheap. 33 and the 45s also feel cheap. Even the tactical switches underneath, or tactile switches even, still feel quite cheap. Even little things, the on-off switch, no difference to the rest of them, really. The shroud's obviously in black, as you can all see. But yeah, so the buttons feel quite cheap. The pop-up light is probably the worst thing about this deck, if I'm honest, in terms of flimsiness. When I pop this up, you'll see I can literally move it. I mean, look how loose that is. Yes, it's an LED. It's perfectly bright enough to see the entire grooves on your record as it goes on. So that's really all it is. Wasn't so much a big no-no for me. It's just a pop-up light at the end of the day. It literally does pop up and pop down. It just feels very cheap in comparison to any of the other turntables out there on the market. We'll next go to the graphics. So Technics have obviously printed their graphics on the top. It's not raised in any means whatsoever really. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if enough alcohol cleaner on this and you kept rubbing, this entire thing would lift off. It looks very cheap in comparison to the original Technics as well. So again, this is one of the major drought downfalls of everything that's mass produced but they're trying to maximize the amount of money they're making. That looks okay on camera. Believe you me, guys, you look at it up close, it's not the best. Right, tone arm, before we get to the pitch in a minute. Tone arm, guys. Again, 
Uh, very similar in some ways. I mean, the tone arm tube, as you can see, including the end, the end with the head shell connector, is identical to that of the original Technics models. The gimbal section for the housing for the tube is identical as well. The bearings internally and the pivots will be different, including the top section of the arm. The entire base itself and the assembly is completely different to the original Technics models. So for those of you out there that think you could just take this and uh, replace it with a Mark II arm. Again, you could change the arm tube and the housing, but you would not change the base. So a lot of modification work would be required to get this arm out and a Mark II arm in. That will be happening at a later date. And that's something I will be doing. Promise you of that. Um, so that's the arm. Again, the paint quality going back to this. This type of paint does piss me off a little bit. You can see just from a distance, it does attract a lot of dust. If I move it over like this, you'll see it. Now, this flat's fairly tidy to be fair, and it's covered, it's constantly covered over in its dust cover, yet it still gets absolutely filthy. It's one of these horrible paint types that if you keep rubbing over the same area, it attracts grit and it starts to build up under your fingers. Again, quite hard to see under the camera, but in person, if you did this, you'd get very, very annoyed. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens, say after six months of me holding my hand here and moving the pitch control and seeing what this area here is gonna be like. But all in all, it looks okay. Right, let's do a couple more things and we'll go to the pitch. So the platter, oh my days guys, the best part about buying a brand new turntable, the Technics in particular, is taking that platter out of the box and installing it on and it's nice and shiny. So that's a big plus as everybody knows, we all love nice shiny bling, especially when it comes to Technics, no nicer feeling than putting a brand new platter on a deck. Um, but one of the only major downfalls between this I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up on camera or not. Let's just have a look. So you can't, you can just about see it. Um, hang on. Can you see if you look at the strobe, see it goes up and down slightly? It's machining on the platter and paint. We'll get to this in a minute, but yeah, platter is a nice bit of kit. Um, in terms of technology within this thing, this is completely different. They've revamped everything. This is literally rebuilt from the ground up. They've taken a few bits from the older decks and they've gone bollocks to it. We'll rebuild it from the ground. It's got a microcomputer inside, which pretty much adjusts everything. Even putting the deck into service mode is crazy how it works, how it self calibrates, it's self automatic calibration. You can do all sorts of gizmos, reverse the deck round, there's, tap, there's dip switches underneath the platter. Without me taking the plastic off, you'll see them there. There's dip switches. Um, they allow you to select all different things from torque. This bloody plastic's not coming off. <laughs> allows you to do things from torque, break, even LED color. You can switch between red and obviously between blue. But I've left it on red to be as classic as possible. I have some nice little touches. You can play 78s as well. So you can reverse, you can do 78 by holding the 233 and the 45 buttons and pushing the start. Nice little function there for you. And yeah, overall, it's a, it's a nice turntable. So the pitch control, everybody has been on at me about this saying, how good is the pitch? Yes, it is digitally controlled. People are under this illusion that they are digital pitch controls. People say digital pitch. Guys, yeah, it's one way of looking at it, but you need to understand the slider itself which connects to the main deck itself, but all the internals, is analog. It is an analog slider, which is controlled digitally, okay? You put it one way or the other, digital pitch or digitally controlled pitch. I say digitally controlled pitch. That is exactly what this is. Now, I ran into a few issues uh, with this deck when I first got it. Had to find out very quickly about putting this into service mode and getting all the real bits all sorted, but basically the 0% lock was not sitting at zero when you put the pitch at zero. So when the pitch was at zero like this, it was actually running it here on the strobe dots to give you an example. So it was actually running too fast. Um, it's nice and smooth. I will say it's not as smooth in terms of movement as the re-loop or any of the other modern turntables really on the market. It actually feels quite rough, so you can't move it quite fast. But let's be honest, how many of us DJs out there just mix? are gonna be moving it really stupidly fast to get things in. So yeah. Yes, it is digitally controlled. It's not your usual analog style slider as found in the Mark II up to Mark V, but don't let that put you off, 
okay it does work very very well it does take a little bit of getting used to now Technics Panasonic however far you want to take it have claimed that they've managed to replicate the original slider as best of their ability that they can I call bullshit on that if I'm honest with you I've done enough of this stuff now I'm taking enough of these turntables apart to realize what's going on um, it is accurate you can pull off a bloody good mix on it the first thing I did on my original video was do exactly that so I will give this a 10 out of 10 for mixed DJs. For those of you out there that are very worried about the pitch being too twitchy, i.e. like the Mark, the M5G, which was the nicest looking Technics on the, on the market as far as I was concerned, but the worst turntable to mix with. Doesn't matter how many of you out there are going to argue and say to me, I don't know what I'm talking about, and the M5G is a good deck for mixing on, you are absolutely wrong. You speak to any expert regarding these Technics turntables, you speak to them about the M5G, they will all say exactly the same thing. The steps on the pitch too big it's too it's just really really hard work okay this for anybody out there that owns m5g's this mix is better okay it's easy to work with the, pl the platter is completely different the way that you have to use it is different but this is good okay i actually strangely find that mixing with this turntable in plus 16 mode is actually more accurate than mixing in plus eight which is very weird i never usually do this with decks i always keep them in plus eight but this for some strange reason i find they're a little bit more easy to work with in plus 16 so try it out guys if you actually own if you own mark sevens let us know how you get on with that and try mixing just on plus 16 like i said i find it easier in terms of all the dip switches underneath um i usually set mine so the brakes on the, like the higher setting so it stops quite fast, but to be quite honest, I mean, it's not the fastest deck to slow down. It's very, very much the same as what the original Mark IIs were, if I'm honest. But it does work very well. You can tweak that to your, to your liking. There's a couple of adjusters underneath. The torque on the motor, I have set to its standard settings at the moment on the torque. I find that it's probably the best way of going about it. At the end of the day, Technics say standard torque setting is such and such so you leave it as standard if you want if you're scratching a lot you may want to change it to high torque but you know if you're used to using mark twos you'll feel at home with it straight away with the torque on the deck okay and you also lower the torque too there's also a lower torque option so that you can actually have it lower so when you do touch the platter you haven't got to uh, sort of provide more pressure onto the platter to try and slow the track down so it does take a bit of getting used to but there's lots of different functions which make this a very beneficial deck for anybody looking to uh, upgrade their turntables so again the tone arm as well um there were a lot of people moaning about the tone arm saying it was quite flimsy and loose but one thing that people don't didn't really realize or didn't really take into account was most people doing these reviews didn't have the arm locked with the arm loose as you can see it moves around quite badly but the idea of the lock is actually quite obvious and straightforward to lock it in. Once that's locked, that is tight. And that is exactly what you want. So for those people saying that it's cheap and nasty, okay, I'll be honest right now. The actual housing assembly where the threads go through here is not the same as the original Mark II. They're not individual slots where we'll have the threads going inside and outside. So this, yes, I would say is a lot cheaper. I'm not impressed with that whatsoever at all compared to the amount of Mark II, Mark V, my M3D assemblies I have um, I've taken apart in the past. So I think they've failed with the arm, the actual arm assembly. That's the biggest thing that lets this down. But the tube... The pitch, everything else, it's been given a good thumbs up from me, this turntable. So mixing on the deck, you're all wondering now what's it like to mix on. Like I've said, the one thing that Technics have apparently eliminated on this particular model is cogging. So to give you an idea on cogging, when you do this and you touch the platter, usually you see the dots will be doing this. They'll be fighting, okay, like that when you put pressure on the platter. They claim to have eliminated that now, which makes mixing a lot smoother. But I can tell you right now, they have done a bloody good job. They haven't completely eliminated. That's absolute bullshit. Because after having a good long mix and changing the torque settings, it's quite obvious that cogging is still here. But it is a lot better. So a little mod that people tend to do with the M5Gs is to reduce the cogging as well. And that also helps with mixing using the digitally controlled pitch control sliders. So um, that's one thing I used to do with the M5Gs, just to make them a bit more bearable. But that on this turntable is quite a joy. It's actually a really nice deck to mix with. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Okay, I mean, if you're used to using purely analog turntables your entire life, if you're like me, you've been DJing 20, over 20 years, 
and uh, you've been using Mark IIs and Mark Vs everywhere you play out and then you play at home, then you will find it a little bit hard to get used to. It is like an old friend in terms of the way it looks and the way it feels, but the pitch control will take a little bit of getting used to. All I'll say is move it where you want it, move the pitch, and before you decide to automatically nudge it forward if it's too slow, just leave it. Or every time you make little nudgements on the pitch, don't touch the record. I know it's so easy. A lot of us, is two different types of DJs. You've got the DJs that will push the record and slow the platter down after they've naturally touched the pitch to try and speed it up or slow it down. And there's the other type of DJs, which will be also a Lyco mix as well, is obviously move the record or pitch bend until you do it. So pitch bend up, pitch bend up. Now, you can do both with this deck, and they both work very well, but... Um, I would say I'd tend to like I say if you're going to touch the record in any way, keep your hands away from the pitch straight away just to let it, just to let it sort of get to grips. It's going to sound silly, but try it, guys. You'll see what I mean. Uh, the only thing that does annoy me a little bit on this, which I was quite surprised they haven't done, but it's not the end of the world, is this. You've got a red LED, which is usually green on the other decks, and when the LED colour is changed underneath the platter, where it's changed to blue, you'll have obviously got a white pop-up regardless, but blue 33, 45 strobe, and blue pitch. But it doesn't turn on when you go over it. A feature that every other modern turntable on the market has done, apart from the bloody Technics. Um, such a shame... But not the end of the world. And as far as LEDs are concerned, depending on the sizing and structure of the LED, if I could get a replacement, I'd probably change it over myself anyway. But was something to look into. So how many marks out of 10 would I get to give the Mark 7? It is definitely high up there. I can't knock it. I'm not, I have been Technics through and through for a long time. Hence why my business is just dealing with Technics mainly. Um, I love Technics as a part of my life. Has been for a very long time, over 20 years. And I can't knock them for that. I mean, they deserve a lot of respect. They're well respected in the industry as the industry standards from previous, you know, previously. But with this deck, I think they're falling short slightly. Yes, they charge eight hundred pound, and before everyone turns around and goes, "Oh my God, that's so it's bloody expensive." Yes, it is, guys. It is a lot of money, but it's cheaper than buying a CDJ. And in this day and age, when you look at how much Pioneer CDJs are, which are the industry standard. You choose between one of them and one of these, you've got some change left over. So when you look at it like that, it's not actually that expensive considering these are the best, meant to be the best turntables on the planet, the Technics. So yeah, all of us out there that go, we paid grand for a pair brand new. I mean, I paid 1200 for mine. You could pay, I don't know, six, 700 pound back in a day. A lot of people were telling me, but um, for Mark II's. And yes, I know prices have changed, but that just goes with the times, guys. We can't all stay in the same shoes and just stay you know, as we were in the bloody early 2000s, it just doesn't work. I learned that a long time ago. But um, I would, I'd honestly recommend anybody out there that hasn't tried these to try them. They are very nice turntables to use. Yes, they are light as a feather. Yes, the build quality isn't really as good. And I'd recommend these more for people using them at home more than live gigging. That is a no-brainer due to the isolation on the feet and the base of the deck itself. So that's my main concern is the base. On the, sorry, actually the vibrations on the feet and obviously the feet themselves are very, pretty much standard techniques I mean these are the ones from the Mark IIs to give you an idea it's with black tops instead of having the silver tops so that is a big plus they've changed the feet so it's not like on the GRs and you can remove the cables too you've got removable RCA cables removable ground cable yes it still uses its own ground cable um, so it is a nice it is a very very nice deck in that terms you also got a removable uh, power connection as well and it's all recessed into the back of the deck. Might work out a bit tricky depending on how you have your decks positioned in battle mode and what type of cables you're going to be using and where they're going to go. But it's another hurdle you can all think of. But I do think it's a nice turntable. I would say to anybody out there that has got good condition Mark IIs and good condition Mark Vs, etc. And you've had them for years. If you're sitting there going, should I buy one of these or should I upgrade to buy them? Personally, if it's my honest opinion, no. I would not do that. Um... Just in terms of the obvious, like I say, the build quality of the two units. The rubber base on the deck is no longer there. The pitch control is digitally controlled and not analogue anymore. And there's a lot of differences between this and the old Mark IIs and the Mark Vs, which just don't cut the mustard for some of us mixed DJs. You can mix on this, and it is nice to mix on, but it's not as much fun for us technically minded DJs that want to take your hand away from the pitch and concentrate more on your mixing. 
If you're like me and you like to throw the channel fader up, move around your pitch, do all your usual bits, sorry, move around all your, your bass bleed, your trebles, everything else, and concentrate purely on the on the volume, bringing your tracks in, not having to touch this as much. This is probably the wrong turntable. Most of these modern decks these days are quite bad for this. This is the best one out of all of them, though. But yes, anyone out there that's got Mark IIs, Mark Fives, etc., and they're like, oh, should I upgrade them? No, I'd keep them. Give me a call or an email and let me service them for you, and you ain't got to worry about it. Save yourself £1,600 on a pair of these. £800 each, guys, is a lot of money. A lot of money. Right, that's the Technics. And also you get your lid as well, don't forget, your dust cover. That's included, and you get the head shell with the head shell mount and everything else and the black accessories, so it is nice. Let's move on to the reloop, shall we, guys? So this is the other bad boy that everybody's talking about. This is these are the two decks that everybody's been asking me to do reviews on, and this is the most popular one ever: the reloop RP7000 Mark II. Basically, in a nutshell, a super OEM turntable with a lot of nice features. Nick from other turntables. Let's be quite honest. Um, this is the silver model, also available in black. You must have seen these before. There's a lot of Parts of this deck for the eagle-eyed people out there that are good return tables will know straight away where they're from. They're all going to be saying, oh, Stanton, oh, Gemini, oh, Newmark, all oh, this, all that. There's lots of different turntables that these have been modelled around, um, but some of the parts are a bit unique in comparison. So let's give you an overview, shall we? So as standard, this thing is nice to look at. The build quality is fantastic. It weighs an absolute ton. So if you think of a Stanton Straight 150, you're pretty much on the same lines. This deck has a super, has a, has a hand-pin motor. Okay, it's a Super OEM with a hand-pin motor. And if you don't know what hand-pin is, have a look on Google. Most modern aftermarket decks now all have the hand-pin motor or from hand-pin. You may find they look different, but in reality, some of these decks you could spend half a grand on when actually you can buy a deck for 140 quid that's exactly the same, just looks like crap, but does exactly the same thing as what all these decks will do. It depends on what way you want to look at it and what way what way you want to go. But this is lovely. So Hampin Motor, you have got your usual bits for the eagle-eyed viewers. So the actual arm assembly, as you see here, including the gimbals and the bearings and the pivots, is from a Stanton Straight 150 or a Stanton. Okay, Stanton arm. The housing for the tube, Stanton. The actual tube itself is from a Pioneer PLX 1000. Not a lot of people know that. And obviously you've got the end, the end um, socket connection here, which is from a Stanton as well. Um... Same thing is obviously the end of the weight. I change the look of that slightly. This is more reloop. The base itself, that is also Stanton. And the actual base adjustment, that's designed specifically for reloop. That's why the only original things actually on it is reloop, as well as the anti skate knob. You'll know a lot of Stantons, they tend to have it just blacked off with lots of wrinkles around it. So that's give you another indication. Okay. The pitch control has been taken from the Pioneer PLX 1000. Now, if you guys remember a very long time ago, I, I did a video review that I had a pair of PLX 1000s and I could not stand them. I literally did a video, I literally did a mix on them, popped them back in the box, game over. I went straight back. I was back on Technics again. Um, this is a little bit different, and I've, I'm going to explain to you all why this is different and why this changed my mind on the whole digital pitch saga that everyone keeps talking about. So, again, Yes, it's the PLX1000 slider, but with one little difference that makes a hell of a difference with mixed DJs, torque adjustment between classic and turbo. The problem with a lot of these modern decks now, these super OEMs, is this. The torque is on the highest setting on every single deck. So basically, when you start it, it's instant. When you stop it, it's instant. Great if you're into scratching and you want that sort of thing, but it also wants to rip your fingers off. So it is high torque, but when you look at the comparison between that and the Technics, where it feels more fluid and you can almost slow it down with a little bit of pressure, this bugger wants to rip your hands off. Takes a lot, of, you can see me pushing it down now. Look, it's a lot of pressure trying to push it down. But this was the killer of most of these modern turntables. They're all set to the highest, and you can never adjust them. This one has the adjustment. Now I have this set on the lowest setting normally, like you saw when I did the video when I first started. And you can see automatically, look, there's hardly any pressure needed to slow this down. Now, having that option 
makes a huge difference for us mix DJs. Now I scratch as well, I've been scratching for a very long time, but I prefer mixing to scratching, always have done between techno, hard dance, classic trance, that's just me, okay? So I need to but buy a deck, it has to be able to mix. If you can't mix on it, I fucking throw it back to the shop or you just don't bother. And being in my game now, guys, I know what decks I go for. It's quite simple. Um, but yeah, having it set to low is a lot easier to work with. Um, so when you make the minuscule movements on the pitch control on this particular deck and you then touch the platter, because the platter isn't actually fighting your finger so hard and it's releasing a little bit slower, it feels like you're using an old friend. It's more like using a Technics then it is using something that's going to rip your fingers off and actually cause you more grief than good. It means you've got to be more on the ball if it's set higher. Whereas if it's set lower, it's like you've got the lighter touch, it will move it around and it's just, it's a lot easier to mix with and to work with. The pitch control in general is fucking smooth. I mean, you can see on here, look, that is gorgeous. I mean, most Super OEM decks, the pitch controls are stupid smooth anyway. They usually have either the Stanton or the, um, the Pioneer slider probably from the same bloody factory anyway. Everything else seems to be on these decks that I take apart. Um, and also, look, the green light turns on when you hit it at a 0% as well. And with any of these decks, Super OEM, they're perfectly accurate. They line up spot on to what the strobe dots are. And also you have the reset button as well to make it at the zero point. You've also got your plus 8, your plus 16, and your ultra 50% pitch control as well so you could do some nice tricks this was more catered around the turntable list more than just the mixing dj hence why you got these options on here the rp8000 to give you an idea and the mark ii is exactly the same turntable minus the midi buttons on the side and obviously the control for the serato it's exactly the same turntable other than that so for any of you out there that are thinking about buying the 8000 because it obviously you think it's got more features and it looks better and it must be a better deck do not be fooled it's exactly the same turntable minus the mini functions on the side so if you're like me and you just play vinyl and you play the odd bit of time code here and there excuse me then this is the one you go for you're never going to use any of the midi buttons the whole thing will just be flashing away doing nothing so this is the one you go for the 7000 mark ii by far the better choice to go between the 7 and the 8000 if you are just a mixed dj playing on vinyl okay um, how accurate is this to mix on? Everyone's going to be asking me. I've been getting a lot of messages from this on my page from customers as well. Some customers have actually got these and have been saying to me they're buying Technics as well. And uh, they will want my point on this more than anything. How easy to mix on? Now, I find these decks, I'm going to be honest, they mix nicely. They're very tight. They do tend to wobble a little bit. And they tend to sort of throw themselves off beat a little bit quicker and easier than what the Technics Mark 7 does. Um, I find they're a bit more twitchy. So to give you an idea, when I was mixing on these earlier, I had both tracks lined up. This one in my headphones, and literally you get it to a point, I start my track on zero and I was moving it up and I got it to about here. And then what I found was moving it up, moving it up, touch the pitch slightly, moving it across, moving it, touching it, moving it up, touching it. And I did it so much till you get to that sweet spot that you know it's just, it's gonna click and lock. And it did. But then after a period of time, it started to go back. So I think I started moving it back, slowing it down, moving it and slowing it down. Before you knew it, the pitch control was up to here. Then it was up to here. And bearing in mind, to get that sweet spot for the pitch, it had to go up to here. And then all of a sudden, it started going back up again. Now, whether or not this is a faulty deck, <laughs> I, I highly doubt it. I mean, this was a deck used at trade shows. This has been given to me by one, one of the reps at Reloop. So far out to Matt, thank you for letting me use this, my friend. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a weird one in terms of pitch. I don't think it's faulty. I think it's just how this deck is designed. But um, yeah, you one minute you're up here, then you're down here, then you're up here again. And it's a shame because they're very, they're very tight. I think that's the only thing that lets this down. All the rest of the features on this thing, I mean, the only I'll tell you the only thing I don't really like about it is the casing for the on-off switch. It is your typical Stanton straight 150 cap cover it might look all right it's rock solid but they should have gone with something more technics based they're maybe not in black but at least doing it in silver and polished they should have a lovely look with a little recess one the same style as technics but at the end of the world let's start with this the buttons guys this is more this is more technics territory than what the technics and the newer technics ones actually are now flimsy plastic and not the best and you've got some proper 
die cast style buttons that actually feel like you're turning it on and off and you've got two of them so it's literally uh, you have it in battle style we can have it in club style and you'll be right as rain with that the other thing is the buttons themselves they're rubberized the they feel really really good when you turn them on or off and the other thing you'll notice is the leds they've got under lit buttons so the actual the markings on all these buttons are under lit they feel lovely when you press them they don't feel cheap unlike these these may work great but they've gone backwards with this technics have gone backwards with their build quality yes they're made in malaysia and they're all mass produced as always but no this feels cheap whereas this feels premium and i think for any turntable that you're spending over i mean this is what 460 quid that's 800 the buttons on this nearly under half the price you can nearly buy two of these for the price just over the price of one and it's hard not to buy two of these when you see the comparison between them so again the buttons guys are lovely quality they even look better let's be honest but yeah reverse mode straight away it's instant on instant off okay it's just a nice deck 78 push them both down pound not that you're ever going to use it but the option is there pitch controls nice again back the buttons on the, the pitch control plus 8 and 16 and 50 so 50 percent pitch you'll see it look and slow that bugger down and speed it all the way up lovely you also got brake adjust as well so at the moment we've got on here on the minimal setting if i adjust it all the way to the six setting it takes six seconds for the actual deck to slow itself down if the camera decides to lock itself there we go ready for this boom push the button you've got to count six seconds and it'll eventually slow down and again back to its minimal settings i like them slowing down quite fast to be honest there we go and there you have it guys so again this deck in comparison as well you've also got the um your line output as well as the phono so you can have a choice between having line output if you haven't got any more phonos on your mixer we have it as a third deck or whatever you're doing and you haven't got to use the ground cable and go for the line and go for the line instead sounds great can't can't fault that line outputs just as good so i wouldn't worry too much about that neither um scratching capabilities as you'd imagine by a deck that's such high torque of super oem it, it really is nice to use if you're more used to using techniques set the torque on the lower setting um and that's that build quality yes it's a plastic base it weighs a ton it is just a very nice deck to use so again look little finger hurts me fingers doing that that's not gonna happen actually <laughs> really hurt um pop-up light or target light whatever you want to bloody call them i call them a pop-up light even though they are a target they're removable on this deck whereas in the technics it's fixed so let's be realistic guys cheap and flimsy pop it on done but yeah it's a difficult one i mean if it was me if i had my time with this and i was and obviously i wasn't lent this unit by reloop to do my review and we've got the Technics there, which obviously I've spent my hard-earned money on. What would I go for? So if I had the two of these in front of me, and I had a proper long mix on them, and I had the choice, what two would I go for? Well, this is the truth now, guys. I'm going to get another Mark Seven. okay? This is purely for the fact that I only use these at home, okay? I need another one to match this. I own this turntable, whereas the Reloop, obviously, I don't. I really do want to get another Mark Seven so I can get them both mixing together and do a comparison between two of these brand new, okay? Um... Because obviously mixing between one brand to the other is nice, but I prefer to have them matching. If I already had one of these, I'd have another reloop. But I own this. Another one of these needs to come here. But if I had, if I had my money again, and I wasn't collared to do reviews, I'd probably go for the reloop, guys. I probably would. Yeah, the pitch is a little bit twitchier, but. Build quality overall, and even the way it looks, it just is a very, very nice turntable. It, it just justifying spending sixteen hundred pounds for a pair of these Technics, considering the build quality, the cheap, little, cheap little flimsy light. Not forgetting the problems these decks are having. This is what I said at the beginning of the video. I'm having customers from all over the world message me saying they're having problems with pitch problems with the pitch zero correction point uh saying they've got problems with the platter dot saying they're moving up and down technics in general with their um with their support 
have been absolutely useless. They've admitted liability to some customers that have called them and actually emailed them back after explaining the issue, saying, very sorry that your deck appears to be faulty. Please send it back to the dealer or give it to someone that's obviously someone that can repair it. That's their answer to people that have owned these decks over three weeks. That's not good enough. After the third day of owning this deck, I was calling Technics up. I spoke to their development team and their support team. I spoke to the same person, Chris, at Technics. God knows how many times now. And he's got to a point now where yesterday I spoke to him. This is December, guys, by the way, for those that are watching it at a later date. Uh, I spoke to him again today in December. I think it's the 6th today. And um, he said, if we get any people with problems, can we send you over an email with your de with the details for them so that you can let us know if you've experienced the same thing? And I said, of course. So I'm pretty much working at the moment, along with my current job, which is repairing, modifying, customizing, and servicing the Mark IIs to Mark Vs. Um, basically act, having to act as a representative because I've got so many customers that are having problems with the Mark 7s. And it's not a, an actual physical fault as of such. These have left the factory. The quality control has been shite. I mean, this one here, to give you an idea, the platter dots, I don't know if you can, you can actually see it, but the platter dots, again, I was trying to show you, if I zoom in on this, hang on. Is it going to let me do it? If you look very carefully at the dot, if I hold my, just hold my thumb still, there you go. See the gap distance between the black and the top of the dot on the zero? It's moving up and down. That's machining. Now, I've spoken to Technics about this. They spoke to the factory, and apparently the factory responded saying it's an optical illusion. What an absolute load of rubbish. I've had so many customers all saying exactly the same thing. The problem is it moves up and down. And even at zero, when you have it set at dead, dead, literally at zero point, you'll see it move to left and right, which is basically wound flatter. But it gives the impression that it's moving left and right and up and down. So it's basically doing like a cartwheel, which on a lot of the other decks, that didn't happen. So that's another issue. And the other one, like I say, was the zero. Now going into service mode, running the details through was a pretty straightforward job for me to do. Um, obviously ascertaining the service manual for directly from Technics or Panasonic, if you want to call it. Um, so again, it's quite straightforward having to push this back to how it was. And it was a simple case of putting a deck in service mode, moving the slider up to zero, moving it exactly where you want it, and holding a combination of buttons down, turn the deck on and off, and away you go. Then recalibrate the deck. So it was a nice a nice little touch compared to having to get a multimeter out, a frequency counter out, and oscilloscope. So I was quite happy about that. Um, but yeah, considering that... The only issue I found with this, like I say, was the twitchiness on the pitch, which I have a feeling it's been abused by quite a few people at BPM. I think it's in Birmingham or BPM, wherever they do it um, nowadays. I know it's not in Birmingham NEC anymore. So I think it's been abused by a lot of people and could probably do with a good refresh, maybe a new slider or recalibration. But um, something's a bit weak in it. But I, I wouldn't hold this back to the deck. You think it's just me using it, turned on an half hour or two a night, maybe a cut for a few few hours over the weekends. Um, yeah, I'd be very happy with it, and I've got a very very good feeling this is this is going to last quite a while. I've stated a lot of my videos on Facebook. We live in a throwaway society, guys, and if anything lasts you over a year, you're very fucking lucky. And this deck, unfortunately, I if someone said to me, "How long is it going to last?" Well, I've counted three problems that I've actually personally had since date of ownership, and that was only a couple of days after I took it out of the box. So that, quite a few problems. This one, nothing. That kind of shows you, really, and kind of tells you something. If anyone out there wants to see a video of me mixing and scratching on these and giving a brief comparison again, go on my Facebook page. If you go on Just Technics and you look at the videos, there is a comparison video that I had done. Again, this is actually from a flat as well. I managed to do this when I had them both there when the missus was out. And uh, the, the quality of the video isn't the best, but it does the job and it gets the word across. But this was my opportunity to do an actual video between two of these decks to let you all know my honest thought on them and like i say the reloop's really nice and if i had the money again and i didn't use this i probably would definitely go for the reloop the problem you have is a lot of retailers don't have these decks out on display this deck being in particular the mark 7 because it's so flaming expensive they think that if they just undo a box and put it out on display, you're going to automatically lose the value. The same as if you buy a, a brand new car from a showroom or a brand new, like for me, if you're buying a brand new motorbike, you buy the bike, 
the minute you take it out there, you lost a set amount of the profit. And if you were to sell it privately after the return period's gone, you're going to lose money. These decks are already appearing on second-hand sites, 500, 550 pounds each. And bearing in mind these were set, these are 800 pound a pop, it's a lot to lose. So for those of you out there again that are waiting to get these second hand, you're gonna be you got a little while to wait yet, I think. Um there's only a couple of them popped up. So you got a little while to wait just yet. Will the sales plummet on these decks? I think they will. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of people really jumping straight to these. I think, like I say, a lot of the technics faithful, especially myself. Um I mean, I had to get one. I wanted to see exactly what the fuss was about <laughs> and everyone nagging me for review. So it had to be done. I love Technics, so I would have been a no-brainer. I would have ended up one of these eventually. Um, but yeah, I think the Technics diehard fans, after seeing one of these in person, especially seeing my reviews and using these, are more inclined to keep their Mark IIs. You know, the late, late 79, 80 series Mark IIs. Just nice decks last forever. And for all these people out there that are doing these reviews, I've seen I've seen this one video in particular. It did make me chuckle. Of two people working for a very popular DJ store um, talking about the pros and cons between this deck and the Mark II. Differences between the two of them physically, how to use them, and is there any difference between them? And basically saying that... Oh, excuse me, got a frog in my throat. Hang on. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, they're basically saying that... There's only so many times that you can service an old Mark II. What a load of rubbish. The correct term is this. There's only so many times that you can give your Mark II to people that claim to know how to service them. And people, the problem is, you can take it to one person, goes, oh, I can do that for you. And all they actually do is take it apart and clean it. This is the difference between going to someone like that and going to someone like me that will do a capacitor, capacitor changeover, pitch control slider changeover, xenodiodes, power components, for check everything, oscilloscope. You know, this is the basic things that you do with a service. And um, unfortunately, this puts a lot of people off. But I, I just hear a lot of sales spiel. I think what they've done is in my video... And they've gone, we better do one properly. And unfortunately, guys, you've shot yourselves in the feet because you've just lied. Saying there's no difference in comparison between this deck and a Mark II, you are having a giraffe. Everything about this deck is completely different. That's like saying a reloop's the same as using a 1210. It's not. It's nothing like it. This is very different. It has been rebuilt from the ground up. Every single component, minus the tone arm clip... And a couple of other little differences is completely different. So for anybody out there that says this is identical to use as the Mark II, the 5, the M3D, uh, the M5G or anything like that, you're very much mistaken. Give yourself a swift kick, swift, um, kick up the arse and stop talking rubbish. Stop thinking of your sales numbers, guys, and tell the public exactly what they want to hear. People don't want to just spend £800 on this you know, without seeing an honest review. Not two jumped up people behind a computer that turn around and go, oh yeah, it's great, oh my film's great, oh the pitch is so easy to use. I've been mixing guys over 20 years now, purely vinyl on this, and I'm telling you now, these are a different breed to mix with than anything else. Never mind all these reviews you see online or top DJ saying how wonderful everything is on them. These are not as good as a Mark II, okay? Keep hold of your Mark IIs. Now, what I've been telling my customers is this. If you keep going on about these Mark VII's, if you really must buy a brand new turntable to go with your setup and your Technics enthusiast and all you want is Technics, well, what, what options have you got for a brand new deck? This is your option. It's your only option, really. The GR is not designed for DJ use. The GAE was never designed for DJ use, which leaves you with this deck, the Mark VII, which was purely designed for DJ use. DJs in mind, hence the, the thin slip mat with the, the slip sheet underneath for scratching, which I may add works very, very well. So it's something to bear in mind, guys. Okay, would I spend £800 on it again? I'm going to be honest with you now. If I hadn't have already bought one, and the space was there. I don't know. But I'm going to buy another one. <laughs> I am. So I want a matching setup and a brand new mixer to go. This is my home setup. The last thing I want to do when I get home is turn a pair of these on, if I'm honest. But come towards Christmas, I think these are going to be used a lot.
But yeah, just to summarise everybody, Reloop RP7000 Mark II, fantastic turntable for the money. I would definitely consider buying a pair if they can't cheap enough second hand. Snap them up, guys. Even the price brand new. I sell these as well. They're really good decks. Build quality superb. Lots of great features. And just for pure mixing on them, you'll have a whale of a time once you get used to the pitch. Again, Technics 1210, SL1210 Mark 7 or the 1200 Mark 7 if you're obviously outside of the UK. They're fantastic turntables in terms of the way that they look. Build quality, unfortunately, like I say, is not the best. And you look at the pop-up light, the paint quality, graphic quality, etc. And obviously there's the rubberized, there's the, 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 the non-use of the rubberized base. It's now plastic ABS. So it's nice, but it isn't great. They really have missed the mark, unfortunately. I think they're charging a premium. I don't think it's going to be long until they drop the prices down. I would say to anybody out there that is interested in genuinely buying a pair, I would wait I would wait a little while. Keep hold of your Mark IIs. I wouldn't sell your Mark IIs anyway. But keep hold of your Mark IIs for a while. See what happens. I have a feeling they're going to decline. And I think they're going to go down in price slightly just to sort of compete against the Reloops and also the Pioneers. But there isn't really a comparison um, between them, if you're honest with you. What they should have done, being completely oblivious to the rest of this, what they should have done with this is brought some limited edition versions of these out. Um, which are completely different to this, and then brought these out afterwards. So, SL1210, yeah? And you got an SL1200, both exactly the same turntables. What I should have done was brought, brought out a limited quantity of 1210 Mark 7s, which featured the analog, original analog setup with no digit, digitally controlled slider. 1210 units in black with digit with analog slide, analog control slider, and 1200 units in silver with an analog control slider. I think if they had have done that and marketed them for the hardcore enthusiasts, they could have also gauged how many people would be still be interested in us specifically after these turntables purely because of the pitch control. And I think that could have given them a good um, a good leg up, you know. Not only would they have sold them quite quickly, because I tell you now, even if they were three grand and they were newer versions of the Mark IIs with analog slider control sliders, I would have snapped a pair of them up straight on the credit card, guys. And they'd be sitting here right now. So they should have done that. Maybe it's something for them to consider at some point. Nice little market employ from them as well, isn't it? But there you go. So the RP7000 Mark II. Again, the great turntable. And the Technics 1210 or the SL1210 Mark VII. Again, the brand new Technics. Is, it is nice. Falls very short of the original versions, though. And that's my honest take on these turntables guys anyone's got any questions you can get hold of us either by commenting below i will say right now anybody that leaves any negative comments and it's going to start being vindictive and nasty you will be removed your comments will be removed and you will be banned from my page i've got no time for assholes at all if you want to leave so you want to leave me a message directly on my facebook page you're more than welcome to you can send us over a message go on just techniques at facebook.com forward slash just techniques my website also is just techniques.co.uk my contact details are on there feel free to get in contact with any questions you've got and while you're on there take a look at me online store all my merchandise thank you ever so much for watching everybody i hope this has been of some help for you to help you decide them 800 quid you got in your pocket grab a pair of them you know you want to if you've got 1600 quid in your pocket mm, i probably wouldn't do it again <laughs> get some mint condition mark twos guys you can get them for a grand these days cheers guys take it easy i'll speak to you all very soon